and we will go ahead and get started here this morning. Welcome, everyone. I'm glad you could uh, make it this morning. Um, looking forward to sharing uh, the last lesson that I have here in this little mini-series that we're doing. Uh, but before we get into that, I'd like to start out by reviewing core values. And uh, the core value that I like to start out with is uh, Jesus' primary core value, and it was that Jesus always valued people. Jesus always valued people. Now, at Cockerton Community Church, we have eight core values. Um, and those core values are Bible, Bible community. community, what else? Worship, prayer, that's over here, that's a bonus, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bonus value, church values, stewardship, stewardship. that's a good one, outreach, outreach. Service, relevancy, and then within any group, there's a set of values. And in this particular group, we have two values, one of which was growth. We want to be growing. The second value that we have is timeliness. And that is for me to make sure that you are done on time, and I will do my best to make sure that you are done on time this morning. Um, so just a little bit of logistics. Um, we will be having class next week. I will not be teaching. You will have a stunt double teacher next week. It might be Scott. We haven't really had that conversation yet. Um, <laughs> he made eye contact with me. I thought that was, I, he's oh. been, you've been going to, <laughs> he's closed his eyes now. Um, <laughs> He's, he's been going to school. He's done with school. I figured he was just in that zone, uh, but um, we'll get you sometime, Scott. We'll get you sometime, but uh, I'm just, I'm just funning on you, but uh, we, we will have a stunt double uh, teaching here next week, and we're going to be teaching on the principles of your environment to your growth. Uh, and so it's, uh, it, it, it's, going to be a good, uh, it's going to be a good lesson that you will not want to miss. Uh, last time we did this, uh, we, we did a lesson that will be similar to this way back in uh, the early days of COVID when we were meeting in the, uh, no, it was before COVID. It's when we were meeting, the service was in the gym. Anybody remember when we were redoing the sanctuary? We had service in the gym and my little class was meeting in the preschool room. So if you weren't in that room, um, bonus because you'll get a brand new lesson. If you were in that room, you're going to get a new, a, 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 the updated version of that lesson. Um, the week after, uh, we're going to talk about imagination. Uh, that's, that's a lesson I'm very much uh, looking forward to. God blessed us all with an imagination. The question is, how are we using it? How, we use our, how do we use our imagination? Uh, and then uh, the week after, it's going to be a repeat lesson, one that I forgot to record, uh, but one titled The Myth of Risk. And that's one of my favorite lessons uh, that I've taught here in the last uh, three or six months. Um, so I um, want to encourage you to uh, plan to be here for that. And I think the week after that, that actually gets us to Easter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so uh, that's what the next uh, several weeks look like. So I just want to be able to share that with you. If any of those sound interesting, they're all intended to be standalone lessons. Uh, if you want to, if you can join us, great. If it doesn't sound like it uh, is up your alley, that's fine too. Uh, we have other, other uh, uh, classes that you can attend here. Uh, again, my core value or the core value we have here is growth. We want you to be growing. And if those sound like topics that can help you grow, you are more than welcome to be joining us. Um, over the last couple of weeks, I've shared with you a framework um, that is intended to help us in all aspects of our life, right? Um, it's this framework that I, that, that, that I use on uh, directional leadership, and I'm going to draw that on the board here real quick. Um, there's you, and you live in this little box, and within the direction, there are different, there's different levels of authority, 
all right? And within our lives, there's some people who have authority over us. At work, that may be our boss, right? Um, for those of us that are married, it may be our spouse, right? You know, there's, there's different types of authority. Um, and, there, there, and so we need to recognize there's people that we need to lead up to. Uh, there's people that we lead down to, people who we have authority over. Maybe people that report to us in the workplace, maybe we have children, whatever it turns out to be. Um, and then we also have this, this other direction of leadership, which I call leading across. And this is where there is um, no direct authority. You don't have authority over somebody else, they don't have authority over you, but there's the opportunity that you have to lead them and to lead them well. And so over the last uh, three weeks, um, we looked at this, I guess, in the first week, uh, a couple weeks ago, we looked at the principles that, that govern how do we lead ourselves, right? Last week, we looked, at, we looked at those principles around how do we lead others. So the first week was here, second week was here, how do we lead others? And today, we're going to put a very particular emphasis on how we lead teams, how we would lead people that we would have some level of authority over. Now, I'm giving you these principles, and uh, you know it's within this context, but understand that the context, the, these principles will work wherever, right? Uh, I just want you to ha have a bit of a, a way to look at those. So um, the way we look at these principles is through a series of laws, and these laws are just concepts that always work. And what I have found over the last 10 years of, of study is that uh, there's a fair number of people who do not know these principles, and, uh, and there's even a fair number of people who may know these principles, but they don't follow them. And what they end up with is they end up in a place of frustration. And so uh, when we talk about this, um, you know, I, I, the, the, the first place I look is how, how do I help you uh, survive any given day of your life, right? How do you lead yourself? Um, how do you lead your household? How do you lead your team at work? But understand these principles also would apply for how do you lead others to Christ, right? These, 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 are, these, are, these have applications in, in any environment that you want to uh, put yourself in. So in the first week, we looked at leading yourself, and we looked at the principle of the lid, which said that wherever we are, the leader in any group is the limit on that organization. If you have, if you have a, 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 a struggling leader, they may have a low lid, and as such, the whole team, the whole department, the whole organization is gonna struggle, right? Um, and so what we, we talked about with that is that we need to be always looking to raise our lid, because if we, it, when, when, when we raise our lid, it, it allows everybody around us to improve as well. So we talked about how it's so important for us to, to raise our own lid, but then also how it's important to be able to raise the lids of others. As you just witnessed, I tried to raise Scott's lid here a moment ago. He seems to be opposed to the idea, but he'll, he'll, he'll come around eventually, right? Um, that's, I'm just teasing Scott. Um, we talked about how, we, we, we talked about the law of process, which said, this doesn't happen in a day, it happens daily. It's something that you need to do regularly. You need to be working on building these particular things uh, because if you are not building them, uh, they're not gonna get better. The easy way to, to, to look at this is around, um, it's around if you wanted to get in shape, you went to the gym. You don't go to the gym one time and expect to be Mr. Olympia or is it Mrs. I don't know what the, the female version of that is. Miss Olympia, I don't know. Uh, but it, it just doesn't happen that way. You have to go through a process, and you, you get better a little bit every day, every day, every day. You work on getting better and better and better. We talked about the law of sacrifice. The law of sacrifice said you have to give up to go up, right? We have to give up things of lesser value in exchange for things of greater value. Uh, that's a big part of how we lead ourselves. You know, if we wanted to get ourselves in shape, I have to sacrifice the cinnamon rolls at some point. That's, that's just the reality. I, that, that's something that has value for me, but what do I get in exchange for that? I get something of greater value, which is apparently a, a better physique. I don't know. Um, we talked about your inner circle. Who are the people that you hang out with? Because the people that you hang out with are going to determine how effective you are, right? There, 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 there's going to be an impact there. Last week, we talked about leading others. 
And as we talk about leading others, there were four principles that we, we looked at. We looked at the law of addition. And the law of addition says that leaders add value to people. We talked about uh, Jesus' core value being that he valued people. Uh, when you read his stories in the Gospels, what do you find? You find he shows up to somebody, what does he do? He adds value to him. He adds, he adds value to him. He adds value to him. He adds value to him. That's what he does. And, uh, you know, that's, that, 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 that's an important thing that um, we recognize that we must do. We talked about the law of solid ground, which is all about trust. You don't trust leader, so, solid truth, solid how about I put a whole solid ground? If you don't trust the leader, you're not going to follow them, right? You, you know, we, 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 we've talked about that before. You can insert your own political jokes here, right? You, you know, there's leaders that you would not follow politically. Why do you not want to follow them politically? You don't trust them, right? That's, so we, we, need, we need to recognize that there's principles that, that govern how we build trust with people. We talked about some of those last week. Uh, we talked about respect. We talked about how uh, respect is so important that you need to re you you will you will follow leaders who you respect. That's that that's what it comes down to. And that we we looked at how do you how do you build uh, respect with 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 people. And last week we all, we finished up by looking at the law of magnetism. And the law of magnetism says who you are is who you attract. Right? We, we talked about how what's most, what's most drawn to a magnet is another magnet. So who you are is, is, is the type of people that you're going to, uh, is, is who you're going to pull to you. Now today, we're going to talk about how do we lead teams. We're gonna give, I'm going to give you four principles uh, for that today. And um, I'll summarize on the other side at some point. But I have four principles I'll give you this morning on how do you lead teams. And in spite of not spending the weekend in the hospital this week, I do not have the board prepared as uh, well as I want. But um, I'm going to be giving you the scripture. I'm going to try to remember to put it over here. If I don't, um, just nudge me, uh, raise a hand, throw a, throw it. Do people throw tomatoes anymore? No. Snakes, did you say? Eggs. eggs. Oh, I guess I'd rather have eggs thrown at me than snakes. Uh, but uh, the first law we're going to look at today is the law of connection. This is one of my favorite laws. The law of connection says leaders touch hearts before asking for a hand. A leader touches a heart before asking for a hand. Uh, and it's such an important law. And I'll, I'll tell you as you, un, under, as you understand this law, you will see it violated all the time. All the time, all around you. You, you, you see leaders who do not know their teams. And when leaders don't know their teams, they're not able or they're not capable of leading their teams well. And I just want to remind you, um, everyone deserves to be led well. You know, I, I would challenge you to make a list of who, who, who would you put on the list of people who do not deserve to be led well, and like even the people you don't like, you probably wouldn't put their name on the list, right? That's just, that's just the way it goes. So when you're leading your team, you need to take, you, you need to not just take the time, but you need to rather invest the time uh, to get to know your team so that you can position them well for success. In the back, we're going through next steps. And one of the things that they do in that next steps uh, challenge is they take a spiritual gifts assessment, right? It helps, it helps us understand what, what natural talents and gifting that God has given people. If you don't know what those talents and gifting are, what do you do? You end up putting people in places where they, they don't thrive. They, 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 they can't be successful. And what happens? They get frustrated. They get frustrated with that. Um, Taryn, will you come get in the back part of my backpack? Uh, there's, a, there's a Rubik's Cube in there that I want to use here. And I forgot to get that out. But um, one of the, I think there is. 
Thank you. So um, one of the popular topics in the world today is burnouts. Anybody heard a talk, anybody heard, seen anything about this? Anybody know somebody struggling with this? I won't, don't put yourself on the spot. If you are struggling with this, like blink, you know, see, see, see me later, right? Um, but um, there is this, uh, there's this popular thing going around about how, how organizations are struggling with people on their teams with burnout. And I'm going to ask you this question, whose fault is that? Whose fault is burnout? Why is that happening? Right? You know, um, based, on, based on the laws that we've covered, and more specifically the law of the lid, we know that everything rises and falls on the leader. Right? It's the leader's responsibility. Um, so it's the leader's job to know the team. Right? And so in the world today, if people are, are burning out, um, you know, I'm going to suggest that that falls on the leader. The lead leader needs to have their finger on that pulse. Now, um, I find that this is a bit of a, a nebulous, ambiguous type definition, so I want to give you the definition that I use for burnout. Um, it's a pretty simple definition. It actually comes from a conversation that I had at a convention many, many years ago. Uh, somebody said to me, Jess, people don't burn out from solving problems people burn out from not solving the same problem. Herein brings the Rubik's Cube. Who in the room knows how to solve a Rubik's Cube? 20 years ago you knew how to solve it, right? Now, have you ever watched a competition where people, like, have you seen these, these like, genius kids, and they have this cube, and they're able to pick it up and they look at it and they set it down and they put their hands on the table and then there's a buzzer and they pick it up and done. And they, like, do, these, they do this in seconds now. And so I, I, I use the Rubik's Cube as my example because I'm going to tell you right now, if you know how to solve a Rubik's Cube, how many Rubik's Cubes can you solve? All of them. Just keep them coming. Just keep them coming. People don't burn out from solving problems. People burn out from not solving the same problem. So if you don't know how to solve this Rubik's Cube, and I gave you this Rubik's Cube, and if, if you look at it, there are, there's, there's literally three blocks, four blocks, that are out of place. Like, how, how hard can that be? How hard can that be to get these four? Anybody want to take a crack at it? Nobody wants to take a crack? Because this is what's going to happen. If you don't know how to solve it, You'll play around with it here for a little bit. And whenever it doesn't get to where you want it to be, I'm not going to do anything magic. This isn't going to be solved, so don't, don't wait for that. Um, you, have no long, you have no idea how long it took me to get that far. Uh, but, uh, but what happens is people will play around with it for a little bit, and then they're not solving the problem. And what happens? They burn out, and they put it down, and they go away. They stop trying. Right? These, these are the things that we see happening in the world today. And it's, it's, it's every industry. We're, we're, we're seeing this happen in every industry all over the world. Right? Now, this is where leadership is so important because one of the things that comes to mind first is, well, maybe if we just paid people more, they would be happier and, and do whatever. Right? And I'm going to tell you, you, you can pay somebody more if they can't solve the problem. You, you, all you do is delay it by a little bit, right? That's, that, 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 that's, that's what happens in this thing. Leaders must connect with their teams to know what's going on with them professionally and personally so that the people on their team can perform at the highest level. Now, uh, in the Bible, there's this wonderful story of Ruth. And so I'm just going to write Ruth over here. We're not going to read the book of Ruth this morning. We do not have the time at our disposal. But if you're familiar with the story of Ruth, Ruth is a Moabite woman. So uh, for those of you that miss me drawing the Holy Land, uh, here's Israel. And here is Moab, outsider that marries into a, to a Jewish family. And then tragedy of tragedy, her husband dies. And her mother-in-law, um, Naomi, her husband dies. And Naomi says to Ruth, why don't you just go back to your people? Why don't you just, just go back? You, you can find a new husband. And Ruth says, no. Now, I would ask you, 
why on earth would Ruth not go back? And I'm going to suggest to you it's because Naomi had made such a connection with Ruth. She had touched a heart. And, and then Ruth felt compelled to, to, to offer a hand, right? Like that's, that's what we have. That's what we have here. Now, there's a key, there's, there, there's a key sub point to this, and it's, it's, it's this. It's always the leader's job to connect. Leader must connect. This is so, so key. Now, I'm going to draw this because this is, this is the best example that I have encountered in my life. Um, there is, I'm going to draw stick figures here. Bear with me. There's a guy. He has a daughter. And I'll see if I can. That's supposed to be a skirt. All right. Bear with me, right? I was Thanks, Sherry. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that somebody can. Um, thank you. So the guy, he's going to get married, but this, this guy, he has, he has a daughter, right? He has a daughter. Now he's going to get married, and his wife, who is wearing a skirt also, right? She also has a daughter. And a long neck, apparently. Look at that. My goodness, right? Told you, I'm not an artist. Now, they get married. I have no idea how difficult it is to blend a family. I know that I, I don't have the courage for that. I, I, like, I, I don't know that I could go through that. But this is what happens. This family gets married, and now there's tension in the household. Can, 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 can you believe that? Can you believe that there could be some tension in, in the household? And specifically, there's tension between the husband and the stepdaughter. Now, the law of connection tells us that the leader touches a heart before he asks for a hand, but it's the leader's job to connect. Don't miss that. And I'm going to tell you, as I've, as I've watched this scenario play out, what this leader has said is, he said that when this little girl gets smart enough, she'll do the right thing a complete violation of the law. And the household struggles. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? It's just, it's, it, it's, it's, he, he says that when this daughter wises up, things are going to get better. He said, the day she turns 18, I'm kicking her out of the house. I'm like, that's going to go over real well, pal. Right, you know, that's, that, like, that's, that's real sophisticated thinking. When it comes to leading our teams, we must make connections. We absolutely must make the connections. Uh, because once we make the connection with our team, then we can lead them to new territory. That's where we have. Now, I've probably gone way over time. Let me see where I'm at. Uh, law number two that we're going to look at this week. Law number two is the law of empowerment. And the law of empowerment uh, states uh, that secure leaders give power to others. Secure leaders give power to others. You know what the opposite of this says? Insecure leaders don't. And maybe you've seen that. Maybe you've encountered an insecure leader who keeps all the power to themselves. Right? Um, empowerment is about helping people maximize their potential. That's what it's about. It means being on their side. It means encouraging them. It means helping them find success. Right? It means giving people power. That's what empowerment is all about. Uh, and leading well is not about enriching yourself. Leading well is about how do you enrich the lives of others. Now think about that. You know, if you're going to share the gospel and the good news of Jesus with somebody else, does that make your life better? 
it makes their life a lot better. You're empowering them, right? So um, when I started as an intern, uh, I'm down in Franklin, I started as an intern, uh, I was empowered with a couple of things. Uh, the one that I was most scared of is I was told, Jess, you need to control the pharmacy inventory. I said, excuse me, I, like, I didn't even know what any of the drugs were, uh, but I was told that I needed to manage the inventory. Uh, and I did, and I like to think I did a halfway decent job of that. But what I was most excited about, especially uh, working in the pharmacy over the summer, was I was also empowered with how to adjust the air conditioner. That's an important, that's an important power to have on a hot summer day, let me tell you, right? You know, I was, I was shown how to get in, how to do all those adjustments, that's what it is. But I'm going to tell you, when a leader can't or when a leader won't empower others, what they do is they create barriers within the organization. They, they create barriers that the followers will not overcome, right? And if the, if the barriers remain long enough, the people will burn out, right? Problems not being solved. And then they're going to give up. They're going to stop trying. And eventually, they'll leave. That's what happens. That's what happens, right? Um, it's said that people don't leave companies, but that people leave leaders. And I'm going to tell you, I have found that to be absolutely true. And that is, that hurts. I'm going to tell you, when people leave you, that hurts. You, you know, I, 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 you know the, how much of a jerk I am, right? You can probably rate me on a scale from, well, it's a pretty high scale, and I know that I score well on it. But, you, you know, I, 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 I was scoring all sorts of points, you know, uh, one of the times that uh, one of my team members left me. Like, what on, like, what on earth are you thinking? Right? You know, I, 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 I did not do well in that particular instance because I did not understand the law. I didn't. I didn't. And while it hurts, I think it's really important uh, to have, uh, to, to, to be able to use this law to, to help us maintain some perspective. Um, if people are leaving you, uh, you don't necessarily have to look at it as a, as a condemnation of your leadership. What you need to look at it as is an invitation for you to improve your leadership. Now, I didn't know that explicitly at the time. I have learned that since. Uh, but that, 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 that's, that, that's one of those important pieces that I have, uh, that, that I have picked up. Um, you know, last week we talked a little bit about the law of addition. And I, I shared the story of, you know, it's, it's so important to me that you are growing, that, you know, you're, you're, you walk out of this room any given Sunday uh, a little bit better than what you walked in. Right. If that's not happening, if, if, if I'm not adding value to you, I want you in a place where you can where, 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 where you're, you're having value added to you. But I'm going to also tell you, I got an ego and my ego says, how many people show up? Do people like me? And I struggle with that. I do. And it takes an awful lot of courage to be able to say, if you're not growing here, find somewhere where you are. And I'm going to tell you, it takes an awful lot of courage to empower people as well. It takes a ton of courage to do that. But I'm going to tell you, we can look in Scripture and uh, we can see Jesus using the law of empowerment. If you would, turn with me to the Gospel of Luke chapter 9. We're going to look at, we're going to cherry pick a couple of verses here. Let's look at verses, chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. It says, when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power. He gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure disease. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And that's what they did. There's a little more instruction that, that, that follows there. But I want you to pick up the, the story here at uh, chapter 9, the first part of verse 10. In chapter 9, verse 10, it says, When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. They went out and they did it. Now I want you to turn the page because the story continues. Let's go to Luke chapter 10 verse 1. Now if you're in a Bible that has headers, what does this header say? Jesus sends out 72. Jesus sends out 72. He empowered 12. They went out. They came back, reported. And now what's he doing? He's sending out 70. Chapter 10, verse 1. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others 
and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. Fast forward, chapter 10, verse 17. It reads, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. They were empowered. They were empowered. That's Jesus modeled the law of empowerment with his followers. And he, he, he actually models the law of empowerment with us today. We call it the Great Commission. Right? We call it the Great Commission. Matthew 28 18 through 20. It said, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Secure leaders give away power. The next law we're going to look at is the law of the picture. Uh, Not only can I not draw, I can't spell. Law of the picture. Just as a brief aside, I have taught each of these laws a separate lesson about a year ago. If you want to go back, you can go back and watch the the full uh, lessons on all of these from uh, this was probably the first quarter of uh, 2022. They should be on the Facebook family page, and they sh- you can also find them on YouTube. Um, but the law of the picture says that people do what people see. People do what people see. Now, a variation of this law you probably heard on the playground of life, right? It was monkey see... Monkey do, right? That's, that's a very important leadership principle right there. Monkey see, monkey do. Uh, so much of our leadership we catch. We catch from what we watch other people doing, right? Uh, we, pick a, we, 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 we pick this stuff up. And so what this law invites us to do is to be a good example for the people that we lead. That's what it does. Because people will do what people see. Um, You know, Jesus said that the Son of Man came to serve, not be served, right? So he he came to to show us that the way we lead people well is to serve them. And uh, he backed this up, John 13, verses 1 through 17. This is at the Last Supper, and Jesus washes his disciples' feet, right? He washes his disciples' feet. Story goes, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel uh, that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, Peter said, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. 
now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. He's telling them about practicing the law of addition, right? That's what he's doing. He's saying serve, serve one another, right? Um, I have set you as an example, monkey see, monkey do. I have set you in as, a, as an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. And I'm going to tell you that people intuitively understand this law. They intuitively get this, right? Um, you, may ha- you may have uh, had a leader uh, say to you uh, at some point, you know, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Ever heard that one? Have you ever used that one yourself? Uh, I've probably done it a few times myself, right? You know, you, you say that because you recognize that you're in violation of the law, right? That's, that, 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 that's what's happening here. Um, and this is going to bring us to our last law, the law of victory. And the law of victory states, leaders find a way to win. Leaders find a way to win. When leading a team, you cannot resign yourself to a no-win situation. Instead, you must find a way for your team to win. Um, If something that your team is doing is not working as a leader, you have the responsibility to change it. That's, That's where we are. Now, there's many instances in Scripture of seemingly no-win situations. Any come to mind? Gideon, yes. Any others? I put a couple here. Moses takes the Israelites, they get to the Red Sea. That probably felt like a no-win situation. Right? The walls of Jericho probably felt like a a, a, a massive challenge. Perhaps the the stereotypical one that's used commonly today, it'll be used commonly as the basketball tournament start up here in the next week or so, right? David and Goliath, right? Seemingly a no-win situation. But I I, want to share with you a phrase that you you can... uh, used to describe your mindset about the law of victory. When you face a massive challenge, when you face a massive challenge, you can find a way or you can find an excuse, but you cannot find both. You can find a way or you can find an excuse, but you cannot find both. I'm going to tell you this, the way you find a way is by staying connected to the vine. It's by by being connected to God through prayer and worship and the study of his scripture. uh, And he will show a way. He showed the way to Gideon. He showed the way to Moses. He showed the way uh, to uh, uh, Joshua in the fall of Jericho. He showed the way to David, right? And you you can find all of these examples. Right? But it's, we, we, we need to recognize that we, we, we've got to keep looking for those ways. Galatians 6 9. Galatians 6 9 reads, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You've got to keep going. You've got to keep going to find that victory. The law of victory tells us that leaders find a way for their teams to win. And so let me just come over here and I'll, for those of you that want to have everything succinctly, today we looked at the law of connection. We looked at the law of empowerment. We looked at the law of the picture. And we looked at the law of victory. In these these principles, did I spell it wrong? Um, I don't know how you can tell my writing's so bad. Um, 
these principles help fuel us in a, in, in a Bible-based way to lead ourselves, to lead others, and to lead the people who we have direct authority over. Now, I, I don't know if I shared this story um, the first week of, uh, of class or not, but as I, as I started learning about these things, uh, it's weird. Have, have you ever had people make recommend, has anybody ever recommended that you read a book? few of you have. Have you ever read such a book? Somebody recommends, hey, you should read this. Do you just drop everything and read that book? I don't. As a, as a general rule, I don't. I'll say, oh, you ought to. Now, I'll, tell you, I'll buy the book. My library looks fantastic. Like, I'll buy it, but I don't always, or I might read a couple of pages, right? Well, I, I had an instance, um, it was probably about 10 years ago, where I had two people in two separate occasions, in two separate contexts, recommend a book. And the book was titled The Richest Man in Babylon. And it was a book that was written uh, maybe about 100 years ago uh, about personal finance. And it's a wonderful little book. It's just a uh, series of short stories on, you know, how do, how do you manage your money. Um, but uh, it, it's told in a, in a series of short stories. And in the, I think it's the second chapter we meet the main character who is a man who is very much in the place of struggle. But the richest man in Babylon is somebody who was his buddy when they were friends. When they were young boys, they, they did everything together. But now one has gone on and he is in a place of struggle, and the other has gone on to become the richest man in Babylon. And he says, if only I could reconnect with my buddy, maybe he could tell me how I could be wealthy. And I thought, oh, isn't that interesting? And so at the end of that second chapter, he reconnects with his buddy. And his buddy says to him, the reason that you do not have great wealth is that you do not know the law or you do not obey the law that governs wealth. And I'm going to tell you, those words have resonated with me. You don't know the law or you don't obey the law. And I'm sure if you've been with me very long, you've probably heard me tell a variation of that story before. Because God works by law. He gives us laws in Scripture that, that impact how we have relationships with others how we influence other people. He has, he has the natural laws that govern how, you know, the tides rise in, in the sunlight, or in the, the, the sunrise and the sunset. Like, that's, that's the way God works. He, he is a God of, of precise order. And so uh, it has just become fascinating to me to learn these principles and to be able to share these principles with you. And I want to encourage you, you now know the law. The question is, will you obey it? Will you, will you connect with people or will you wait for people to connect with you? Will you empower people or will you hold on to that power? Will you model, will you show the picture of what something should look like or are you going to tell people and do something different? And do you have a figure it out, we'll fight, figure out a way to win mentality around those people that you're leading? I can't imagine what was going through Moses' head at the Red Sea. I can't imagine what Joshua was seeing or Gideon or David like that. They had to have, they had to have some, something different, something different in that. And I, I want to encourage you to have that something different as well, right? Because we, we can use these principles uh, anywhere around us. Um, just I have a, a couple of last thoughts here. Um, I think these are some of the most valuable skills that we can develop uh, to be light and salt in our world today. Like, I, could I become a better singer? Maybe. Could I become a musician? Maybe. If I do this, I can do this stuff today and I can have an impact on people. I can do this stuff today and I can have a, I, 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 can, I can do that. Um, I trust that you may have a little better understanding after the last couple of weeks, especially if you went through any of these individually, but now seeing them sort of blended together, maybe you see how they connect a little more. Um, but again, I will remind you, it's one thing to know it, it's another thing to obey them. It's another thing to obey the, to, to obey the laws. Um, and I would tell you this, there's much more to learn, and I want to encourage you to be a continuous student. Be a continuous student of Scripture. Be a continuous student of people. 
be willing to share the good news and be, be, willing to, be willing to face challenge and opposition because those are the opportunities that will, that will help us be able to lead others better. I know there's a lot of people who are, who are scared to share the good news of Jesus because what if? What if they ask me a question that I don't know the answer to? Well, what if they ask you a question that you don't know the answer to and then you figure it out? What's that look like? Now you're more resourceful to be able to take that to, uh, uh, to other people. Uh, and I'm going to say this, don't just learn, do. One of my mentors uses this phrase. He says, learn a little bit, do a little bit. Learn a little bit, do a little bit. I think there's a lot of folks, I think there's a lot of folks that get out of balance, that they're, they learn a little too much and they do a little too little, or they don't know a whole lot and they're doing a whole, a whole lot. And when you get out of balance like that, there's weird things that can happen. So learn a little bit, do a little bit. Um, let me just read my last paragraph here. Many believers are scared or discouraged about sharing their faith. Some are not scared, but they're also not effective in sharing their faith. By using these principles and stories from Scripture, know there are ways that you can become more confident and courageous about sharing your faith, and you will naturally do things that will attract people. And you can be consistent about doing these things as well. You can. We start off each class by saying Jesus values people. And when we use these principles with yourself, with others, and with, um, and when we use these principles with, our, with ourselves and with others, there will be no doubt that you value people. This is what makes us light and salt. And I'm going to tell you right now, people are so desperate to be valued. They're so desperate to be valued. So um, that's what I have prepared for you today. Um, I end each lesson, or I try to end each lesson by putting these three letters on the board. Based on what we have talked about today, what action will you take? What change will you make? And is there something that you learned today? Is there, is there something that you could teach to somebody else for your sake and theirs? Owen, hit the button, my man.